And you know, I've met Alex, I met him at the camp out. I think he's a good guy. Um, he's a nice guy, he's a nice guy to me. Um, he had me on his channel, he's been a gentleman, things like this. Um, and uh, you know, I quite like him. I just I see some, there's a point where you go like, like, what are you doing? Hello everyone, so by the title of this video you will know that I'm going to discuss uh, Alex O'Connor, Cosmic Skeptic, and him no longer being vegan or reevaluating. I'm reading his post here, reevaluating his ethical position on eating animals. It's not to say that I didn't see this coming. I'm going to sh share with you some of the the big red flags that I saw with Cosmic Skeptic, and they were they're in the within the last year, I think. The first red flag I got. And now I'm not in the business of sharing uh, d DMs and things like this, but. Alex did reach out to me at one point and he was like, Hey man, like I'm in, I'm in France and it's really hard to be, to find vegan food here. What would practi practicability um, entail in such a scenario? Something along these lines. And then I said, well, where are you? And he, and he told me where he was. And then I looked up on uh, Happy Cow and found about 20 vegan options nearby in restaurants nearby him. And I was like kind of perplexed and I was like, that's, a, that's quite a bizarre thing to reach out to someone like me to ask, considering like I've done, I've done 13, 14, 15 countries in Europe. I've been to quite obscure locations in Europe and I've never had issues finding vegan food, finding, um, finding bread and, um, canned beans and, uh, smoked tofu and, um, even like these other specialty health stores that sell like a uh, nutritional yeast or something like this, or you know, finding uh, vegan options or being able to translate uh, no animal products, no milk, no no honey, no no eggs at, at certain restaurants and then being able to understand that. Uh, I've never had issues like that. Um, so I was kind of perplexed by it and I thought, that sounds like someone who is not very dedicated to avoiding products that cause these rights violations to animals. From that point, I was kind of like, just just watching Cosmic Skeptic, he made a couple posts about that I that I was kind of a little confused by. Um, one that like 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 we're not dogmatists and things like this. We, the, the, stop being so dogmatic about people avoiding certain animal products. There might be uh, uh, reasons for them to um, consume animal products based on their like allergies or something like this. Or I th I just really didn't really get to the bottom of what he meant. And I kind of thought maybe he just thinks oh maybe there's some lactose in some medication that people need to consume for their allergies or something like that. So I thought like, maybe it's something like this. I didn't really know. Then I then I kind of started to like think about Cosmic Skeptic's like ethical position. And I remember he put out a video, which I never responded to. Um, there was enough responses on it. And I've been very caught up doing, you know, I do investigative work. I do a lot of, I've got a lot, a lot of big projects offline that I'm, that I'm currently doing. I never really responded to him and I thought, oh, should we, I don't really want to create bad, I, I disagree with a lot of activists at times and I think maybe we just philosophically disagree, but we can, di we can agree on the end goal or something like this. So I never really like made a response to it. I didn't want like two large activists to be like in some battle over some philosophical dis, uh, you know, disagreement, but it was something along the lines of animals do not deserve rights to their life because we don't even apply that out in practice because animals die in in crop production therefore if if we thought animals deserve the right to their life we wouldn't allow them to 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 die in in crop production something along these lines again i'm just spitting this video off the top of my head i felt compelled to make it if i'm slightly misrepresenting exact positions Forgive me for it. I'm just giving you my idea of what this position was. It was that uh, animals don't deserve a right to life, actually, because we take away that right to life when we eat crops or something like this. And that was like a interesting position because because by by that logic, obviously, human beings die in incidental deaths in civilization through transport. We participate in transport. I drive to get around. Now I'm knowingly participating in an industry that causes inter incidental human deaths and construction building buildings and things like that cause inter incidental human deaths incidental human deaths and i'm not talking accidental i'm talking as a result of a certain industry incidental human deaths occur on plant farms too tractor accidents combine harvester accidents people dying in in uh, peculiar uh, incidents on farms happen to human beings imagine if i was like well incidents incidental deaths happen to human beings in civilization for many different industries therefore human beings do not deserve rights basic rights to their own life 
that is biological extension what he's suggesting. He doesn't believe that, from what I, from what I gathered, he didn't believe that animals' deaths c could happen in a certain context for crop production, incidental animal deaths, and in a different context could be having their rights violated for, say, mass breeding them, exploiting them, enslaving them, and killing them for needless reasons like food. I guess he never really categorised these deaths differently. He kind of lumped them all in. He didn't say, oh, if animals die in crops, well, well, they're not really rights violations. A lot of them are incidental, like there might be animals in the way of some type of tractor, which happens on roads too when we drive cars, and sometimes accidents happen in cars as well. Like Crops are interesting because there's different reasons to protect crops, and crops are the only reason we have civilization anyway. If we didn't have crops, we'd be back in the in the dark ages before there was agriculture kind of thing will be like there will be the population would be a lot less um you know we need crops obviously and <laughs> funnily enough crop production animal agriculture is dependent upon prop, crop production you couldn't have uh factory farming and animal agriculture as we do today without plant agriculture um so interestingly enough like uh, you know a lot of plants are cultivated to feed uh, to the animals anyway but saving that um plant agriculture uh there there are deaths that that occur in plant agriculture and 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 often it's to protect crops uh the crops are being protected from insects and animals and so therefore there's like some competing rights happening here like do we allow animals and insects to just plow through human crops or do we do we say oh, wait a second you're right the, the animals rights aren't technically being violated in these categories because we have to protect uh, human food production and uh when we grab a bunch of mother pigs and we impregnate them we take piglets uh, from the mothers and we fatten those piglets up to put in a gas chamber. We can categorize those deaths as animal rights violations. There's an obvious moral distinction between the deaths that happen, incidental deaths that happen in industry, like in transport and on the roads, um, in construction, or animals having their rights robbed from them, enslaved and murdered. Now that was something that, that, that really got flagged up in my mind. Now, another thing was that, that I'm going to say now, because I think it's important to say, is that a lot of vegans and, and vegan activists, and this is not just to, I'm not gonna, you know, belittle or, I'm just, I'm just trying to create this discussion here that a lot of vegans and activists get caught up on the suffering. And I have been a culprit here too, so I don't think I'm like excluded from this. The suffering is so bad and the cruelty is so bad that we often like, advocate for veganism using the suffering of the animals as the primary reason because the suffering is so you know, like it's so acute it's happening to them directly it's right oh my god we need to stop this first and i know that if i was suffering i would want that to be stopped first but that's not the primary well that's not the fundamental reason animals deserve rights well obviously they deserve rights because they can suffer feel pain and pleasure and things like this but there's an individual in there that that deserves rights whether they're suffering or not um, you can still violate their rights without suffering being involved. So that is the fundamental thing here. But what we see is a lot of vegans and vegan activists and influencers focusing only on suffering and using phrases like, we need to reduce suffering. And, um, you know, I've been, you know, like I said, I've been a culprit here too. I, I focus on suffering and abuse and torture and things like this, or this is bad because of the torture and suffering. I think it needs to be in the conversation, but it shouldn't be the overarching reason. The reason is because... When you have welfare-focused vegans, the reason they're different to rights-focused vegans is that welfare-focused ve re vegans kind of agree in principle with the welfare movement in the, in the meat industry. So they're not too dissimilar at all. So the welfare-focused vegans might say something like, we need to reduce cruelty and suffering and mutilations, and this is bad because it causes the animal suffering. The meat industry will say the same thing. We'll need to increase welfare. We need to stop these animals from suffering. They're sentient. We, we recognize them as sentient, and therefore we should respect animals and, and, and not do these things that cause them pain and suffering. And, you know, basically free range and, um, you know, lessen mutilations and torture and things like this. But... At the end of the day, if they're not being caused this suffering, it's okay to use them and kill them to eat them, basically. Now, now the vegan welfareists might might not necessarily believe that that's where their, their, their rhetoric is taking the situation, but if you remove suffering from the scenario, is it okay to, to essentially violate an animal's right to their own existence? 
um, in order to eat them. So the problem here that I, I saw with uh, Cosmic Skeptic and a lot of people who follow Cosmic Skeptic and, and actually look up to Cosmic Skeptic is that they get they, they are often um, welfare focused vegans. Now, I've had discussions with a lot of welfare focused vegans and we disagree. We disagree that suffering is the issue. Now, suffering tells us that there's an individual in there that can experience that suffering. And that's what who I'm concerned with, the individual. Now, if you put it in the context of human rights, right? And the reason, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place here, but the reason I know Cosmic Skeptic believes that suffering is what matters in terms of ethics, and it's almost like, almost like in a negative utilitarian sense. And the reason I say this is because that... I think he believes, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, believes that the only reason murder is wrong is because of the people who will suffer because of that murder. The individual who's being murdered, provided there was no suffering, and I'll say you shot me in the back of the head, I got murdered. I didn't even know I was murdered. The only reason that murder would, ma would matter morally is if family members were upset um, or if it caused some type of extrinsic suffering because of it and um, the beings who were connected to this human um, were suffering because of it. So suffering only matters, not the individual that was murdered. Now, a rights-based approach would say, well, well, this human being has inherent value. That inherent value is based off of their sentience. There's a subject of a life there. And when you kill their sentience, you're, ex you're essentially violating their right, their moral right to exist based on their inherent value. And I believe that human rights are actually based on inherent value. It's like, well, human human beings, no matter your race or sexuality or your, your handicap, um, all human beings deserve fundamental rights. And for the same reason, animals who share this property with human beings, uh, which is sentience, also, also have inherent value. Therefore, they deserve basic fundamental rights. And when I'm talking rights, I'm not talking about positive rights or, you know, the, the right to employment or the right to vote or these other rights. I'm t we're talking about negative rights, like rights to not be harmed, to not be enslaved, to not be, to not uh, have their preference to live robbed from them. Those are the kind of rights we're talking about. Now, whether or not the animal suffers or whether or not the human suffers is beside the point that their rights are being violated, uh, their negative right to, to, to live is being violated. So, um, when we get stuff in, stuck in this welfare rhetoric of we need to reduce suffering for animals, we we need to uh, focus on the cruelty aspect of the industry, which is an important aspect and should not be ignored, don't get me wrong, but that is not the fundamental. If animals had legal rights, so there's a difference between moral rights, which, which I believe animals are born with inherent moral rights because they are... Um, sentient conscious beings just like human beings have moral rights but legal rights are those applied in law and if animals had the legal right not to be considered property then they would be protected from any uh, human inflicted um, legal kind of cruelty or exploitation uh, and uh, killing for our own means um, they would have to do it illegally because they would have a legal right protecting them from that. The reason I'm talking about all of this stuff uh, concerning Cosmic Skeptic is I feel that um, what tends to happen if we have this welfare approach and we only care about suffering is that we forget about the individual and start caring about suffering in an abstract way. Well, we care about the individual when they're suffering, but we don't care about the individual when they're murdered. Like, why not? Like, why not? That If you ask the individual when they're alive, whether or not they have a preference to live, they would say yes, and in whatever language they could. If they were a different species, I'm sure they would. You can show, you could, you could detect that they didn't want to die in some way. They'll have a preference to live their life. Um, once they once they exist, we have that obligation to them. If we're just focused on suffering, the idea is that if they don't suffer, then we can kill them if they don't know anything about it, and then we can just eat their bodies. And then basically, you can have a humane mass killing of animals humane mass killing of animals provided every welfare problem was addressed the animals were were being birthed and, and and living happy lives and they were happy animals and therefore we could put them all in some humane laughing gas they would never wake up and and there we go we've got a humane mass killing an animal rights position would would call that insane and if you swap the animals out for humans a human rights position would call that insane as well but an animal welfare position a human, I, don't, I wouldn't even call that human welfare, but for some reason in an animal welfare context, if the animals don't suffer, then it's okay to kill the happy animals, provided there's no 
no you know suffering extrinsic suffering because of it so it's an for me that's an insane position and I, i'm an animal rights based uh vegan and i didn't get the vibe like that from alex uh alex is a, opposed to factory farming which if you're opposed to factory farming <laughs> you have to agree that it's because animals are individuals who whose rights need to be respected but if you're just concerned with suffering that suffering is connected to the individual anyway if you don't want them in a factory farm you shouldn't want them to be decapitated for some needless reason but um so i think as activists and as vegans really and i'm a culprit here because i'm an, uh, an animal rights influencer i'm a vegan influencer we need to be more focused on animal rights um and basically as lo biological extension of basic fundamental human rights and be clear on that position and and be clear on how we're categorizing animal rights as well because it can be tricky when you think of like deaths that happen incidental deaths that happen in civilization it's hard to get wrap your head around that's not an animal that's actually not a rights violation because this happens in the human context too and that we're not technically violating those human right, humans rights if there's incidental deaths even though accidental deaths on the roads are bad incidental deaths due to construction are bad and we should minimize them of course they're not technically uh for the most part, uh, human rights violations. They just tend to happen as a result of civilization. So when you talk about crops, this is a similar thing. And um, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around that. You think all death is the same, all killing is the same, no matter the context, which just is not true. So I think um, we need to like be more focused on rights as a movement because we, we want animals to have rights. Um, that's what animal rights are, basically giving extending rights to non-human animals, therefore protecting them. Um, the, the, by extension, giving them legal rights to not be considered property, to not be able to be considered slaves under the law, and uh, basically that would liberate them, and then they would people would have to illegally enslave and kill them at that point. Let's go through Cosmic Skeptic's uh, post here. Um, so the reason I prefaced his post with all of that is because I'd seen... Also, I remember Cosmic Skeptic he had a discussion with Michaela Peterson. It was supposed to be a debate, and I felt that uh, Cosmic Skeptic took apologism to a new, to a new high there, to a new extreme. He was really bending over and accepting her arguments on on health, on the need to consume animals, and he he's really operating outside of his expertise there. And I felt like he did, um, for lack of a better word, cuck to a lot of her arguments to eat animals and a lot of it was about this suffering and welfare of the animal if the you know if the suffering is minimized and he he, he did like to um kind of change the word the the definition of veganism to include uh, the reduction of suffering um and not exploitation in order to kind of suit his position that if an animal does not suffer it's okay to kill them in hunting or some scenario where animals are happy it's okay to kill them if they don't know they're about to die things like this um and kind of he would say that would be consistent with veganism now there's a massive issue here with the vegan definition and i think the, de the definition needs to be addressed because it's not really a, a rights-based definition for example it doesn't matter if they're the the animals are if they are animals it matters if they are sentient and uh, uh if the being is sentient and it doesn't have to be human or animal it could be a sentient artificial intelligence or it could be a sentient alien it is basically what we care about is sentience and uh the subject of a life that's what we care about so there are parts of the the definition like as far as possible and practicable when alex reached out to me and was like oh what is practicable in france and i'm um, just like what do you mean <laughs> like he, he's basically operating off of the the vegan definition which is good for for uh for some reasons like if some people just like you know vegan don't eat animal products kind of thing it's kind of a safeguard but then uh, the definition does have issues with it. And um, I've, uh, a lot of people have discussed this. Uh, Lifting Vegan Logic's been one of them. There's been, uh, been some other people who've spoken about this as well. Um, it does have issues. It's not rights focus where it should be. So let's go through Cosmic Skeptic's uh, post here, prefaced with all of that. Has that been, that's been a long time, so maybe I've got to cut this down or if anyone if you're interested in this we can just keep going um so basically it says uh hi everyone recently i've noticed people wondering why i've been so inactive and wondering where why i've not uploaded any veganism related content for quite some time i've been reevaluating my ethical position on eating animals which is something people have also noticed but what you will not know is that i've also been struggling privately to maintain a healthy plant-based diet so what 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 came first the 
chicken or the egg, uh, for lack of a better, <laughs> for lack of a, what came first? You started struggling and then you started going, you know what, well, I, I really am struggling here, like to just maintain a plant-based diet, which is not hard at all. Um, especially with the resources Cosmic Skeptic has, like, and the, the knowledge and he's incredibly smart kid. Well, he's not a kid, is he? He's an, insp he's an incredibly smart person. And uh, much more educated. He's much more educated than I am in terms of like book, reading books and being uh, going to school and things like this. How could you be struggling to maintain a healthy plant based diet? It's one of the it's one of the easiest parts of being vegan. Um, and for someone who knows so many people in the movement, I just think it's bizarre. So what came first? You started struggling, then you started reevaluating whether eating animals was okay, because before. You seem pretty adamant that eating animals is, is a bad thing to do, mostly. Maybe in the context of factory farming. As I said, he already had a shaky foundation, not an animal rights foundation. I wanted to let you know this because I have for some time been consuming animal products again, primarily but not exclusively seafood, and experimenting with how best to integrate them into my life. You know, uh, I guarantee you he's been eating steak. I could almost guarantee you. I don't know for a fact, so I could almost guarantee you he's just been eating steak lamb maybe and uh, he calls them seafood here sea animals mate <laughs> sea animals mr skeptic um seafood you've just objectified them again to make it easier for you like obviously many 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 sea animals are sentient beings right there are also many sea animals that are not sentient right that we have no reason to believe are sentient uh like oysters for example there's a nerve ganglia in there not connected to a brain why not? If you really must, I don't think you must, if you really must, why don't you eat an oyster? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what, so you've been consuming all animal products? What, dairy, eggs, um, steak? You've been hanging out with Kayla Peterson? You know, really, really cucking to her arguments. Maybe maybe steak from a, from a cow. You're going to be deeply, deeply... Uh, Surprised that what you might think uh, is ethical treatment in the UK is not. And if you're falling for this free range propaganda and th stuff like that, then I don't know what to tell you, mate. But, you know, uh, I don't know how you believe this is justified. And uh, you, I, I personally, if I'm ever struggling to maintain a healthy plant based diet, it's because I'm not eating healthy. And it's because I'm eating too much junk food and hyper processed food um, like uh, Beyond Burgers and things, things like that. But when I move to eating fruits, greens, uh, whole grains, I feel better, don't I? Because it's not hard to get those foods in the supermarket and I don't know how that would be a struggle. I'm uh, interested in philosophy and enjoy sharing personal information about myself, but I can obviously see why this particular update is both necessary and relevant. It's not my intention to go into too much detail here, as I think that will require more space and perhaps a video, but rather let, to let you know with more details to follow later. Well, Alex, look, mate, your, your video when you make it, I... I mean, it's a brave thing to do, but you, when, when you make your video, please don't do what other people have done and throw the animals under the bus, right? Because you've got a lot of influence here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm glad some of your following here have been, like, just calling you out because you could do this in two ways. You know, veganism just, it's a bad ethical position Eating animals is not unethical because they don't actually matter morally. And, you know, I, I think we ought to, to to buy free range slaughtered animals or something like this, which really would, you know, you, you would have a, a lot more blood on your hands or just say like, you know what, I'm confused. I, I don't know how to eat healthy. I've never been properly taught how to, how to use a chronometer app and how to supplement my diet. And I, I don't get outside much or something like this. And I really am confused myself. You know, you could do it that way. Unless you really believe in principle, you've, you've re-evaluated eating animals to the point where, in principle, you think it's an ethical thing to do. Then, then uh, I wonder how he justifies that without sounding like a bit of a, you know, a bit of a bad person. Um, my opposition to factory farming remains unchanged. Why do you care about factory farming? Who, why do you care about factory farming if you're eating animals? Why do you care? Do you think animals matter morally and shouldn't be factory farmed, but they should be farmed under the... Under what context should they be uh, to, should they be murdered? If you have an animal rights position, you, sh you should think that it would be unjustified to violate their rights 
outside of a factory farm context. And what do you mean uh, if your opposition to factory farming remains unchanged? What fish are you eating? Are they factory farmed fish? Wild fish? And why, why, why does a, a wild fish uh, suffer less than a factory farmed fish? And uh, if you care so much about suffering, why do you think it's okay to cause suffering to a wild fish in the scenario of dragging them out of the ocean by their face? And, uh, you know, like, why do you, why do you care about that? if you care so much about suffering. Uh, as do my views, so basically my opposition to factory farming remains unchanged. Well, I hope that you still support campaigns to help destroy factory farming because that's most of the animals in the world. So you're against most of farming in the world, not just the support of factory farming. You have to stop viewing animals as products because that's what led to factory farming. Viewing animals as food is why we have a demand for animal products and why we are meeting that demand with factory farming. So factory farming exists because of people seeing animals as food. And you, at the start of this, are re-evaluating my ethical position on eating animals. Well, that is a problem. So how could you oppose factory farms but also perpetuate the idea that animals are food, which is what caused the demand for factory farms? Because everyone believes animals are food. <sighs> So basically, my, my, opposition, my opposition to factory farming remains unchanged, as do my views regarding the need to view non-human animals as morally worthy beings whose interests ethically matter. Well then, if you think animals' interests ethically matter, do you think their interests are being respected when you are re-evaluating whether it's ethical to eat them or not? <laughs> Obviously, they're your interests, and they're not the non-human animals' interests. I, I'm going to do a little swapsy in the mind here, but let's keep going. Um, you obviously don't think animal interests matter, because if you are too flaky to even... Um, and, I, and I'm trying to be nice here, but to be honest, um, I don't I don't see what the problem is being healthy on a plant-based diet. I, you know, the data is completely against Alex here, and we've had so many people <laughs> get... I don't know what he was eating and stuff like that. I don't know if he had a food diary and I don't know if he knew how to plan a diet correctly, but I don't know what he did. Um, but usually it's something that you're doing wrong yourself. However, I'm no, no longer convinced of the appropriateness of an individual focused boycott in responding to these problems. I am increasingly doubtful of the practic practicability of maintaining a healthy plant-based diet in the long term. Again, for reasons I hope to go into more details later. So he's used the word practicability, which is uh, possible and practicable in the in the vegan definition. So therefore he's exploiting the practicability in the vegan definition to have an exit and because he can't maintain a healthy plant-based diet in the long term. Okay, but, but animals' interests ethically matter. So let me ask you this, Alex. Uh... <laughs> Is it okay to eat non? Is it okay to he eat human animals if you are doubtful of the practicability of maintaining a healthy plant-based diet? And provided animals weren't there, let's just say it's humans and a healthy plant and a and a suboptimal plant-based diet. Is it okay to decapitate humans if they don't suffer? If they're in some free-range scenario, um, in order to to get these uh, to get whatever health property you think you're missing from meat and dairy. I would like to know what health property he thinks he's miss missing and that can't be substituted in a plant-based diet. That would be an interesting discussion as well. And why he can't get that from non-sentient animals like oysters anyway. Um, uh, if he was really, like, if he really had some dire need to eat animal products, which I don't, I don't believe. Why wouldn't you boycott something that is a moral crime against animals? Why aren't you convinced? What has brought you off of the position of supply and demand? And, and if you're not, if you're not uh, convinced of that, that individual focus boycott doesn't, let's say you think individual focus boycotts do nothing, right? Why do you think that you not making a massive post like this and possibly persuading other people to to go back to eating animals isn't gonna cause a massive negative? I could probably say that your your video on this might cause a massive negative impact for, for, for non-human animals um, more than you just individually eating a whatever you're eating, animal, uh, some, some, some fish bodies or some, uh, I don't know, I think you're eating steak. But in your own life, if you do that, right, you are going to be causing uh, less, less rights violations to the animals as it, um, than you would if you make a massive video persuading other people to eat animals and going, oh, you can't be healthy and this and that, when we know scientifically that is false. I don't know why you haven't reached out to someone who knows a lot about planning uh, plant-based diets. You know who comes to mind? Dr. Arby. That guy, he knows what he's talking about. Why not? Why not contact Dr. Arby or the Nutrivore or, uh, you know, or uh, Dr. Garth Davis or someone like this, someone who knows about planning a healthy plant-based diet. Seems you've been conversing more with carnivore community than you have with, with people who who know how to plan a plant-based diet. And 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 it's easy to get gaslit by this 
by this meat-eating crowd. Yeah, I just think he can do a lot of harm here, Alex. And, and Alex, I know you're, you're smart, but sometimes you're not the smartest person in the room. There's sometimes people that... I, I'm not... And, and, and don't... Don't take that as an insult coming from me. I know I'm not the smartest person in the room all the time too, which is why I often, I often consult others who know what they're talking about in the field of plant-based health. And, uh, you know, I just think, I don't know how you're going to reconcile the fact that animals are morally worthy beings whose interests ethically matter with eating them. I don't know how you can reconcile that, you know? Uh, and I don't know why you think it's justified now. And I, I don't know how you believe that supply and demand no longer works. I don't know what, I think you're just looking for out after out after out after out because from from my point of view, it felt like an inconvenience to you to look around when you were traveling to find uh, vegan options. It seemed like an inconvenience. And then, you know, if you're steering towards too much junk food, yeah, it might be hard when you're in, in Europe or France or something like that. But if you're steering towards more whole foods, fruits and vegetables and legumes, the canned legumes and and whole grain bread and things like that, then it's easy. One supports health outcomes, the other one, ultra processed vegan food, does not support good health outcomes. And if you're concerned with a healthy plant-based diet, why are you smashing into vegan burgers all the time? You should be smashing in more whole foods, which are easier to get when you're traveling. And so that's just why it, what makes me think that it's more about a convenience thing and that um, you're being just a bit flaky and, and there was a bit of shaky ground on your position on animal rights because, uh, let me tell you this, the welfare movement, the welfarist meat eating movement, which are like, uh, you know, the, the, the people who were involved with the meat industry would agree with Alex on a lot of his points. Like, yes, animals shouldn't suffer. That doesn't mean they shouldn't be killed though. And use their bodies used in a massive mass collective murder of these beings who have been bred for food. So it's okay if they're, if, you know, they're happily, they're nuzzling around on a farm. If we take them to be bolt gunned when they're not looking, boom, a lot of the meat industry will agree with you. And, uh, you know, I think that that's a huge moral crime. It's an animal rights violation, direct animal rights violation that um, that will that will show... A, it just says a lot about society that we can do this to animals, eat their bodies. You wouldn't eat humans. You definitely... I, I mean, I, I could... Or maybe he would. I don't know. If he thinks the only reason that murder is wrong is because of the suffering it causes family members, then maybe he... he you could create a hypothetical where the humans didn't suffer, you, you killed them for their bodies... And let's just say he started saying, well, why, why should humans have rights? Because there are incidental human... Be you wouldn't drive cars if you thought humans deserved rights because there are incidental deaths in, uh, in transport and construction and even humans die on plant farms. So if they don't suffer, what's the problem with me having like some happy human beings in my backyard, all right? And walking up behind them, make sure we separate them, of course, because we wouldn't want any suffering. Bang, shoot them in the back of the head and eat them. What's the problem with that? What's the problem with that? I mean, you know that humans die in incidental deaths in crop fields, you know, and, and also I've been having some health problems and I need to eat meat to... I wonder if you put humans in place of animals, whether he would... whether he would uh, be okay with that. I doubt it. I don't know. I mean, I have to wait and see what his uh, video sh says. At the very least, even if I'm way off base and totally mistaken in my assessments, I do not wish to see people consuming a diet on my account if I have been unable to keep that diet myself. It's not a diet. It's a position on animal rights that extends to your diet. We don't even know what diet you were consuming, Alex. What were you consuming? What diet were you consuming? Vegan burgers, bruh? Were you consuming a healthy, whole foods, plant-based diet that was well-balanced and supplemented whilst getting sunshine, exercise, and eating enough calories? Like, I don't know what you were eating, and I probably wouldn't recommend your diet to others either. Because <laughs> it sounds like it might have been a lot very heavily processed or something like this. I don't know. Um, I don't know what you were doing. No one knows what you were doing. You didn't reach out to anyone to say, hey man, like you, instead of reaching out to me and say, hey man, like uh, I can't find uh, vegan products in France, yada, yada, yada. You know, why not say, hey man, like, hey bro, do you know anyone that knows how to plan a plant-based diet in a healthy way? I'm feeling a little bit off. And maybe he did. Maybe that's private to him. Maybe he just made his own mind up. For me, if I'm not feeling right, I, I prefer to ask others um, because I know that... Um, that animal rights is what I want to see for non-human animals, not for my own selfish desires. I want to see uh, animals' rights respected. And um, I think this is one of the greatest moral crimes of his human history, and I want to see it ended. And I think all, the, that, all of that stuff that Alex said, I, I think maybe he felt it in his heart at the time, but it, it seemed to be just lip service. Because uh, if you said all these things about animals, right... 
how can you go back to to eating them? So a lot sometimes people's positions change. He, he thought they're morally worthy beings, maybe at one point, or was it just the show? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I could never. Yeah, you will never see me doing this to those animals, being part of what happens to them. You know, it's so bad. It's worse than than Alex has seen in the video. Once you go into these places yourself, and you feel it, and you you know that these animals, there's someone inside there, an individual who matters. Um, I just uh, I see it as a, as a moral crime to to violate their right to exist once they exist and to bring them into existence for the sole purpose of violating their right to exist so we can eat their bodies when it's completely needless and all the science suggests that uh, apart from what Alex seems to seems to believe at the very least even if I'm way off base and totally mistaken in my assessments I do not wish to see people consuming a diet on my account if I have been unable to keep up that diet myself well they shouldn't be doing it for you Anyway, Alex, you know, bro, like, they should be doing it for the non-human animals and to not want to see animals' rights violated. And um, even if I am making a mistake, in other words, I want it to be known that I have made it. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what he means by that. Yeah, you probably have been mistaken in your assessments, but, I mean, I just don't know what kind of person you are, whether you think animals matter morally, they have inherent value, which you set up here, and whether that it's okay to eat them. Um... Yeah, and whether you've how hard you've tried, what kind of diet you ate, and whether it was your mistake that you're now taking out on the animals and beginning to eat them again, and or, or getting lost in some, you're being persuaded by someone in the background. Oh man, ah, oh, some conspiratorial, conspiratorial crap that's not based on any objective research. Obviously, plant-focused diets um, and fully fully plant-based diets have a lot of great data behind them. We know he's very good at reading and 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 comprehending data, and um, maybe he's not, but. I mean, I would just suggest reading the data and seeing what you're doing wrong. I imagine that the responses to this will vary, and I understand why this might come as a huge disappointment to some of my followers. I'm truly sorry for having so rigorously and at times perhaps too unforgivingly advocating for a behaviour change that I myself have not been able to maintain. It would be very embarrassing for him, but I don't think he was off base. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, it's, I mean, I just don't know what he's been doing wrong. And, you know, I've met Alex. I met him at the camp out. I think he's a good guy. Um, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy to me. Um, he had me on his channel. He's been a gentleman and things like this. Um... And, uh, you know, I quite like him. I just I see some... There's a point where you go, like... Like, oh my God, like, what are you doing, dude? Like, what are you doing? You know, I don't want him to become defensive and start being all anti-vegan either. Because I just think, like, oh, it's going to be a battle. Like, it's going to be a huge public spat here. Because, we like, what he does can have a serious effect on animals. Um... But hopefully people like are smart enough to not like fall for this. I've been vegan nearly 10 years. I know it's an anecdote, but I feel crap as a vegan. I feel amazing as a vegan. It just depends on what I'm doing in my life um, and how I'm, how I'm living my lifestyle and what kind of diet I'm eating, how much sunshine I'm getting, whether I'm staying up and walking around in farms all night or uh, whether I'm stressed and haven't left the computer for days. Because I also, when I went vegan, I became a full-time activist. So I started, you know, so there are issues there that come up with just constantly focusing and drinking coffee and staying up and not eating. A, you know, so there are problems that arise from, from public uh, uh, from social media and, and uh, stress and a lot of uh, fighting this battle as well. The way I feel is dictated by what I do in my day-to-day -day life, what I'm eating, how much I'm eating, and how much of that is healthy whole foods diet. Am I supplementing? Is there sunshine in the country that I'm staying in? If not, do I supplement vitamin D? Things like this. Like, It's always something I'm doing that makes me feel a bit rough. And then once I get enough sleep and once I start eating more fruit and once I feel, you know, I start feeling amazing. Green juice, boom, start feeling amazing. And it's funny that, eh? Like, it was never the vegan diet. It was always the way that I was applying um, this uh, plant-based diet, you know. And the science is very clear. It is high whole foods plant-based. It is not, and it's varied plant-based uh, whole foods. It's uh, it's not um, a vegan diet. It is a whole plant food focused diet that is healthy. Um, so let's keep going. Um, I've changed my mind of behaviors publicly on a great many things before, but this is crazy, dude. This is like, um, this is like, yeah, like we shouldn't eat animals. They matter morally. We should eat animals. We ought to eat animals, but they matter morally. <laughs> this is a huge contradiction, mate. Like, this is like saying, uh, I don't know, like put it in the human context. Like, I don't know what you, your position on human ethics is though. So, but like put it in the human context. It's like, it's wrong to eat humans and they matter morally and have inherent value. It's okay to eat humans, 
they matter morally and have inherent value and I think they shouldn't be factory farmed and yada yada. I don't know, man. I don't know. So this feels like difficult to address by a large margin. I didn't want to speak out. Look, look. Uh, until I, I didn't want to speak out about it until I was sure I couldn't make it practically work. Or I haven't. I don't know who you reached out to, mate. Like some of you will not care. Some may understand. Some will be angry, and some others upset. I saw it coming. I, I was. I saw it coming, Alex. Like the way it was speaking about like animals not deserving a right to life and things like that. Well, why wouldn't you be? Why would you think it's wrong to eat them? And thinking that crop deaths are equatable to rights violations when, you know. Uh, when most of the farmland, like, it's 77% of farmland on Earth is being used to either graze animals or grow a crop a feed for animals, right? So any 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 plant-related, um, farm-related protection, trapping of mice, um, cultivating of crops and harvesting, any type of farm-related harm on top of the exploitation and killing of the trillions of animals happens on the vast majority of farmland that's been used for animal agriculture. So all of those issues are magnified, but it just depends on how you categorize them as well. Obviously there's a big difference between chucking a pig in a gas chamber and exposing some animals in a field who have gone on, the, in their, on their own behalf and then being uh, taken by predators or something like this. Like that is not a rights violation. Um, that is called a, an accident or an incident. Um, protecting crops from animals eating all the crops is not a rights violation. So this is quite embarrassing and humbling moment. I also understand and accept that there'll be some I told you so's. Why are you more embarrassed that there were people, there'll be meat eaters going, I told you, I told you, than you are like just a little bit like feeling a little bit weird that you're now consuming animals who you believe have moral inherent value. Whatever the case, please know that this experience has inspired a deep self -re reflection that I will be duly careful in future regarding the forthrightness of my convictions. Animals matter morally, it's okay to eat them. I'm reevaluating whether my stance on eating animals, but they matter morally and shouldn't be factory farmed. It's a huge contradiction, mate. Like, I would be... I mean, you must be very committed to this, so... Because you're being duly careful regarding the forthrightness of your conviction, so you must be very convicted that it's... Uh, it's actually okay or justified to eat the bodies of animals who were murdered. I'm especially sorry to those who are now vegan activists on, on account of my content. Why would you be sorry that you've created people who care about animals and are fighting for their rights? Why would, why would you be sorry? Okay, no, that's what he's not saying. What he's saying is, okay, I don't wanna miss, I don't wanna straw man Alex here because I might have a few times misrepresented you, Alex, if I have a, sorry about that. I'm more sorry to the animals that you're eating there. I am especially sorry to those who are now vegan activists on account of my content. Okay, so he's apologising to people who he's inspired to be activists, animal animal activists or vegan activists. The term vegan activists is a bit weird, but maybe animal activists. And I hope that they know I will still effort with you to bring about the end of factory farming. Okay, so there's that. Um, if Alex wants to help bring an end to factory farming, that's something I could support, um, which is good. I don't want him to be anti-animal in every context. I still think there's a fundamental problem with him thinking that it's okay to eat animals and violate their rights. But the end of factory farming, I don't know if Alex knows that, maybe he does know that. The end of factory farming means the end of commercialised animal exploitation, really, for the most part. It really does. Because by that time, if you end factory farming, the demand will be so low that we'll be able to fight for animal rights a lot easier. So basically, him helping us to end factory farming is a massive will still be a massive uh, help to the end goal, which is uh, animals not to be, to have uh, fundamental rights to not be enslaved and killed for our own ends. To them and to everyone else, I appreciate your viewership and engagement always as well, your feedback, as well as your feedback and criticisms. And he's got a lot, four and a half thousand views, uh, four and a half thousand comments, sorry. If you have the right to force a pig into a gas chamber, then you be, better be damn sure I have the right to force you into a conversation about your justification for doing so. Extraordinary harm and mistreatment requires extraordinary justification, Alex O'Connor. I mean, I've shared a lot of Alex's stuff before. I really liked it, the way that he poetically um, talked about what was happening to animals and defended animals. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real shame, actually. But again, um, the shaky ground he was on from the beginning, just focusing on suffering and welfare and not having a rights position, um, I think, you know, and also been chatting away to, like, carnivores who like you need to eat animals for health and things like this and not having like fundamentals on like his understanding of like human health data alex might make a video soon i would implore alex to 
be careful with his wording. Um, he can do whatever he wants. It's his life, really. But I just say that if you if your video does uh, put animals at je in jeopardy, um, then obviously we're going to defend the animals. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the animals I'm defending. And uh, I would implore others to defend the animals too. If someone like Alex wants to come out against animals, um, wants to promote the idea of eating them, wants to promote the idea that you know the science is wrong, that you can be healthy on a plant-based diet, uh, which w might lead to people to believe that eating animals is then morally justified in some way, like decapitating, causing rights violations of billions of beings. And when we, when we talk about billions of beings, we are talking about billions because I don't think Alex understands that by saying that um, it's okay to eat animals or it's justified to eat animals because I've got a some type of health problem that I haven't disclosed and I never talked about and never asked for help about. I don't know if he's asked for help, but... By him saying that there's a justification to eat animals, what he's essentially saying is, hey, 8 billion people, if he cares about world change, which I do, I care about world change, hey, 8 billion people, you need to eat animals. So guess what we need? Factory farms. And he's opposed to factory farms. But him promoting the idea that I'm reevaluating whether eating animals is, uh, you know, what, what was his exact words? Reevaluating my ethical position on eating animal animals. What you're, what, you're what you're essentially saying is, hey, hey the world, um, I'm struggling privately to maintain a healthy plant-based diet, so therefore you can't, uh, or, or maybe you should consider whether you can either. Um, I'm doubtful of the practicability of maintaining a healthy plant-based diet in the long term. Um, he's going to get into those reasons. But him saying that, right, he's essentially saying to people, you can't be healthy eating, uh, not eating animals. Therefore, you know, I think I'm going to reevaluate my position on eating animals. Therefore, everyone in the world should eat animals, I believe that everyone should eat animals. Therefore, we need factory farming to meet that demand, don't we? Don't we? So you're saying you oppose to factory farming, but you're promoting the idea to eat animals, and in order to meet that demand, we need to factory farm animals. You, you, we need to. What do you think we're gonna, what do you think there's enough land for some grass-fed, like, situation with cows? Can mass slaughter them and there's no suffering? Or, like, you need to factory farm animals in order for human beings to have animal products. You have to. Like, I don't know how he's gonna meet that demand. Like. Is it okay to drag fish out the ocean if they're not factory farmed, if they're wild? You know, what, what is what is his position on that? I don't know. But essentially, his rhetoric is completely contradicting of the, the world he wants to see, op an opposite, a world without factory farming. So, yeah, there's no cons real consistency here. Um, I wonder what sea animals he's been eating. Are they sentient ones or non-sentient uh, mollusks or something? I mean, that would be interesting to know. Um, but he's been experimenting how to, in to integrate animal products back into his life. I mean, I don't know which animal products, and I can only imagine it's going to start with sea animals and probably somewhere go 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 somewhere near steak. I don't know, just because he seems pretty confused. So anyway, that's my uh, video. Uh, it's look, it's long. It's fifty-one minutes right now. You're vegan for animal rights. Otherwise, I don't know why you would, else you would be vegan.